Now we're ready to make the legs and posts of our chair using the Binford 6100 variable speed wood lathe. That's right. Now we first use a rough gouge to take off the square edges. Then we'll Al use a one half inch round nose to start shaping our piece. Marv, bring the camera and let's take a look at this thing. There are various types of patterns to shape your legs, or you can do it freehand. It's a very difficult skill to master, but you might want to practice on a spare piece of wood. Right. That's good advice. I'll give you more good advice. Always think safety when working with a spinning lathe. You notice I didn't wear a necktie. We got a lot of letters about this. You want nothing hanging out and no loose clothing. Possibility. <laughs> you could uh, lose an article of clothing. <laughs> is, it, is it a little chilly in here? <laughs> Hi, and welcome to a special live edition of Tool Time. Today, we're going to show you the operation of a 25-ton hydraulic truck crane. Oh, 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 oh. That's right, Tim. We're going to be using this crane to pick up and set a three-ton beam, which will be used as a diagonal brace, also known as a kicker. So you could call this a kicker picker-upper. This is a lever right here that raises the beam, right? Yes, that's it. That's right. But don't, no, no oh, Tim. I'm doing it. I got it. I got it. I'm beaming up, Scotty. Okay, Al. Now what? Okay, hit the foot brake. Lock the beam in place. Right now. Okay, now. Get out of the cap. Tim's getting out of the cap. And I'm going to move the beam right into place. Uh, as you're going out, be careful. Don't hit the brake release with your foot. This is the lever that would swing the beam. Yes, it is, but Tim, Tim! Are you all right? Mark, right, look out! Tim, your foot, don't hit the brake release! What? We're going to be using something that looks a lot like this. Here you go, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is the Benford Mach 3 Super Plunge Router. Oh, a thing of beauty, isn't it? Three horsepower motor, variable electronic speed control, and adjustable depth stop system. When using a router, you want to use a real steady hand. Well, you might want to use the guide arm, Tim, so it doesn't get away from you. Well, you don't always have to use the guide arm if you have a steady hand. Well, if you want a straight line, Tim. Al, I've been doing this for years, all right? <laughs> Told the table, right? Okay. Start our cut, set your depth gauge, and get going. Perfect, Al. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Taylor, and welcome to the special edition of Tool Time here at our project house in beautiful Kego Harbor Heights. Howdy, Al. Howdy, Tim. Al, what are we doing today? Well, Tim, we'll be expanding the Ingram's living room out here onto the porch. But first, we get to dismantle the existing porch. We'll be carting the debris away in this. The beautiful Tool Time truck, blood, sweat, and gears. Ah, ah. <laughs> this is not your standard Detroit issue. We made a few engine modifications. Of course, when you say we, you mean you. That's right, Al, because if I left it up to you, we'd be on a skateboard and a moped. <laughs> you hear that? That's a big block Chevy 454, two four-barrel carburetors nestled on aluminum high-rise manifold headers and dual exhaust. Let's back her to position, Al. All right. Uh, we'll be back live right after these messages. The point I've really been waiting for, the heavy-duty sanding. And for heavy-duty sanding, we're going to need a very special tool. Lisa? Here you go, Tim. Well, what do you got there? Oh, it's a 2100 model electric drum sander. 
That's right. Four and a half horsepower, patented stabilizer. Not to mention full swiveling trailing wire support. <laughs> Almost more than a man can take. Oh, oh. Thank you. You're welcome. You might also want to mention, Tim, that this particular sander weighs over 240 pounds. Oh, could you help me with the... <sighs> Put an apron on there? We'll call it Al's mom. <laughs> now, because of the weight and the nature of the wood surface, in our case, pine, I would suggest going with the 2400 RPMs as opposed to the 28. Thanks for sharing that, Al. But I think I'm going to go with 4200 RPM. Well, Tim, it doesn't go up to 4200. Does now, my stout little friend. <laughs> I rewired it. <laughs> now, when going with a plank forward like this, you want to go with the grain. How about a little demonstration? Yeah, um, this uh, first one, Tim, is a, is a real classic. It's handmade bamboo. Look at this. Well, that's a good looking rod. Yeah. Nice. Now, prices for that uh, start at about. Um... <laughs> Eight hundred dollars. <laughs> now it's sixteen hundred. You got two of them. <laughs> No, we have an uh, insurance policy for these little accidents. Actually, Tim, our insurance uh, canceled after fourth show. Well, glue it. What do we got now? Oh, well, this next one's my personal favorite. Right. This is a Morgan BXL graphite. Not even you can break that, Tim. Don't bet on it. Hey. <laughs> Boy, that's a beauty. Look at that thing. Yeah. I bet you get a big old stinky bass in this thing, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, Al, open up. Come on. <laughs> well, you want to be uh, careful using a graphite rod in a lightning storm because... It is an excellent conductor of electricity. Oh, yeah, we've been known to have a lot of big electric storms right here in the studio. Well, I'm just saying that if they happen to be in an area that is susceptible to... I need my super standard, please. Here you go, Tim. Thank you, Thank you. Before you stand on this table, will you reimburse me? Now all we need is a square peg. <laughs> Al, hop in. And the Benford Power roofing nail gun is my favorite because the new magazine holds 120 roofing nails. It's enough for a bushel of shingles. No! Oh! Uh, available at fine hardware stores everywhere. Marv, get a claw hammer, get that out of your thigh, get some sab on it. <clears throat> and if it doesn't say Benford on it, Somebody else makes it. I understand that you... What? Huh. Excuse me. I must be allergic to something in here. Oh. Anyway, thanks, Al. So I understand you do a lot of this trimming by hand. Uh, yes, I do, and uh, with pruning shears. Uh, want me to trim a little bit for you? Uh, you'd better not. It takes a lot of experience, but I'll demonstrate some shaping on the elephant with my pruning shears. Ah! <laughs> and there you have it. Hey, very, very interesting, Jim, and I really appreciate you being here. And we'll be right back after these messages from Benford Tools.